welcome to the presentation. In these videos, we will go through various practice questions on various topics to help in your preparation for the Canadian CDA exam. Uh, this will be based on the 2018 Diabetes Canada Clinical Practice Guidelines. And before we begin, don't forget to hit the subscribe button for more practice questions. Let's begin. In this video, we'll go through screening for diabetes. All right, question number one. Let's go through this together. So all of the following are correct in regards to screening for diabetes, except, so let's underline a few key points here. Just be familiar when you read the question, the words that are being used. So here it's except. Sometimes the word used will be which, the, which of the following is false, which of the following is not correct. So just be vigilant on the word that's being used in the sentence. All right, let's go through the options. So first one is screen every six to 12 months in people with additional risk factors for diabetes. Use fasting plasma glucose and or A1C as the initial screening test. Screen for type two diabetes every three years in those greater than or equal to 40 years of age. Screen for type one diabetes every three years in those greater than or equal to 40 years of age. So to answer this question, let's go through the screening process. When do we screen? We screen every three years. And we do those in individuals greater than or equal to 40 years of age. Or those who are at high risk. High risk. And how do we do that? Determine the high risk is using a risk calculator. And there are two to be familiar with. Can risk. Fin risk. So what are these? They're just risk calculators. So basically, it just helps to class a person based on the risk of developing diabetes. So for example, it could be classed as low, moderate, high, or very high. All right, so we gathered that, gathered that much so far. Now, do we screen earlier than every three years? Well, yes, you can. So A is actually right. We do screen every six to 12 months in those with additional risk factors, but also those at very high risk using the risk calculator. So additional risk factors can include um, if they have a, a family member or a first degree relative, sorry, so much as such as your mother or your father with type 2 diabetes, if the person's in, person's in a high risk population, so African, South Asian descent, if a person has a history of uh, gestational diabetes, a history of pancreatitis or polycystic ovarian syndrome, those would be also additional risk factors as well. So we know that A is correct. All right, so the next uh, option we have here is using the fasting plasma glucose and or A1C as, a, as the initial screening test. You know what, that is true. It's actually recommended by guidelines to use the fasting plasma glucose and or A1C as the initial screening test. There, there's also the 75 gram, let's write that down here, the 75 gram oral glucose tolerance test. That um, There's less emphasis on using this, but it is still used, for example, when a person's A1C or fasting, pla uh, fasting plasma glucose falls within the pre-diabetic range. So for example, the fasting plasma glucose, so for the pre-diabetic range, that's 6.1 to 6.9, whereas the A1C would be 6 to 6.4 percent. This is in the pre-diabetes range. And if it's between that, it's actually recommended also to you can do the OGTT test. All right, so we've gathered that, so we know that's right. Next one is screen for type 2 diabetes every three years and those greater than or equal to 40 years of age. And yes, that is correct as we have um, determined right here. So that's correct. Now, screen for type 1 diabetes every three years and those greater than or 40, greater, greater than or equal to 40 years of age. So do we actually screen for type 1 diabetes? Well, the answer is no. We don't screen for type 1 di diabetes. It's just there's insufficient evidence for it. So we don't. So that's incorrect. So all of these are correct except this one. 
So this is actually our answer. All right. Furthermore, let's just uh, show you one reference that you can refer to. So this is um, from Chapter 4, Screening for Diabetes in Adults. Please refer to Table 1, Risk Factors for Type 2 Diabetes. This will list all the risk factors, rather than con based on a person's condition or even medications. Uh, and the next one is Figure 1, Screening and Diagnosis Algorithm for Type 2 Diabetes. I'll just show you a quick screenshot of it. So this is what I was referring to earlier in terms of when you would consider doing an uh, oral glucose tolerance test. So right here, we have the pre-diabetic range. So fasting plasma glucose, 6.1 to 6.9, and then an A1C, 6 to 6.4. So if the, if the results or lab results fall within the uh, pre-diabetic range, down here in the small print, it says here to consider a 75 gram oral glucose tolerance test. So this is when it would be considered. Uh, I do refer to this, uh, it has a lot of information and also refer to the small print, which also provides any further details. All right, just before we go to question number two, I just want to show you guys the, uh, the risk calculators. So here we have the can risk. So again, these are just risk calculators, helps us to deter determine uh, the risk of the person developing diabetes, type two diabetes. Uh, with the can risk, you can see here it's asking various questions and it works on a point system. So it asks about a person's age, their gender, their BMI, their waist circumference. It also asks about physical activity level, fruits and vegetables, high blood pressure, high blood sugar. It also mentions about uh, macrosomia, so uh, birth to a large, a baby weighing nine pounds or more. And it also mentions ethnic groups and education. I just want to give a little start here because this is actually some of the key differences with the fin risk. The fin risk is very similar in terms of the questions that are asked. This is the one here. Uh, the main differences that you can probably that you'll find is that with the can risk, it classes people as low, moderate, or high, whereas the fin risk does it as low, moderate, high, and very high. Uh, the other difference here is that with the fin risk, it doesn't include questions based on macrosomia, the person's ethnicity, or level of education. So that's why I was mentioning here, just these three questions, these are not in the uh, fin risk. These uh, risk calculators can be found online. You can check the Diabetes Canada website. You can also type these into Google and you should be able to find them there. All right, now let's go to the next question. All right, question number two. All of the following people are at risk of type 2 diabetes and should be screened except. So again, the word except. So all of, all of these are correct except one. So let's go through the options. Amy, who has a history of pancreatitis. John's mother, who has type 2 diabetes. And Arthur, who has a glaucoma. Rebecca, who suffers from gout. All right. Uh, let's go through the first one. So history of pancreatitis. Remember... Pancreatitis is just inflammation of the pancreas. The pancreas is where the beta cells are that secrete insulin and where the alpha cells are that secrete glucagon. If there's any damage or inflammation, this can actually affect the secretion of these hormones, increasing the risk for diabetes. So we're going to give this a check mark. So this is correct. John's mother, John whose, mo whose mother has type 2 diabetes. This is also true. Remember, people with first degree relatives with type 2 diabetes are at risk. So that would include um, a parent, a sibling, or a child. So let's give this a check mark. Arthur, who has glaucoma. Remember, with diabetes in general, it has that risk of causing damage to the eye, causing retinopathy. Retinopathy, in turn, you may come across some research where it mentions that it can increase the risk for glaucoma. In the diabetes guidelines, it does not specify or list as one of the risk factors glaucoma. So we're going to give this an X. All right, next one. Rebecca, who suffers from gout. Believe it or not, yes, gout and hyperuricemia are also risk factors. So we'll give that a check mark. So our answer here is C. All of these are correct except C. You can find a full list of the risk factors in Chapter 4, Screening for Diabetes in Adults. It's just called Table 1, Risk Factors for Type 2 Diabetes. Please refer to that. All right, question number three. So our patient here is AR, is a 43-year-old 
who recently had a diabetes screening completed a week ago and is following up with his doctor about the results. His results are fasting plasma glucose, 5.8 millimoles per liter, A1C 5.6%. What can we conclude from his results? He has type 2 diabetes, he has prediabetes, he's at risk and requires rescreening more often, or follow up in three years. Let's look at the cutoffs for type 2 diabetes and prediabetes. All right, so the fasting plasma glucose, let's look at that, and the A1C. So for type 2, type 2 diabetes, the fasting plasma glucose, what's the cutoff? So that is greater than or equal to 7 millimoles per liter. And what about the A1C? Greater than or equal to 6.5%. Let's take a look up here. So his results are 5.8 for the fasting plasma glucose and A1C 5.6. So we can conclude here it's not type 2 diabetes. It doesn't fall within that range. Next is prediabetes. So what is the fasting plasma glucose for prediabetes? Remember that's 6.1 to 6.9 millimoles per liter. And the A1C is 6 to 6.4%. Let's go back and look here. So this result doesn't fall within that range. Same thing with A1C. It doesn't fall within that range either. So we conclude it's not prediabetes. Next option. He's at risk and requires rescreening more often. But let's take a look back at this chart right here. Remember, we saw this one earlier. Screening and diagnosis algorithm for type 2 diabetes in chapter 4 of the Diabetes Canada Clinical Practice Guidelines. So a person at risk, their fasting plasma glucose is five point, between 5.6 and 6, and the A1C is between 5.5 and 5.9. As we can see here, with AR's fasting plasma glucose, it's between, it's, uh, it's 5.8, so it falls between the 5.6 and 6, and also in the between the A1C, which is what's 5.6. So we can conclude that He's at risk, and we need to rescreen more often. And generally, rescreening more often could be every six to twelve months, for example. Furthermore, as we talked about earlier in the beginning, I think it was the first question, we talked about the oral glucose tolerance test. When a person's at risk, uh, the diabetes guidelines specify or uh, recommend. They say consider 75 gram OGTT if one or more risk factors. So that can be considered as well. That's where the OGTT test would also come in, come into play. All right. So back on the question. So we already we've already basically determined our answer. So it's C. Follow up in three years? No. So if back on this, if his fasting plasma glucose was less than 5.6 or his A1C was less than 5.5, then yes, it'd be normal and we would rescreen as recommended. So right there. All right, so that's number three done. Let's go to the next question. All right, number four. So this is in regards to risk factors. So which of the following is not a risk factor for type 2 diabetes? A person with acanthosis nigricans, a person of European descent, a person with bipolar disorder, a person with cystic fibrosis. So let's go through the first one, acanthosis nigricans. So this is um, a skin condition that presents itself with discoloration, mainly in the armpits, the groin, and the neck. And one important point about this, it can also be indicative of insulin resistance. So this is actually a risk factor. So let's take a, let's put a check mark there. Next, European descent. Let's come back to that one. Person with bipolar disorder. So people with psychiatric conditions, whether it is bipolar, schizophrenia, depression. This is a risk factor for type 2 diabetes. People with these psychiatric conditions are at more risk of developing type 2 diabetes compared to the general population. So this is a risk factor. Next, cystic fibrosis. So what is cystic fibrosis? So this is an inherited um, disorder. It affects various organs, the lungs, the di digestive system, but also the pancreas. Remember, again, the pancreas plays a role with insulin secretion. 
So if there's any damage or any uh, inflammation, this can affect insulin secretion as well. So this can actually lead to diabetes. So this is also a risk factor. Let's check it off. So we're basically stuck. We kind of we kind of already know what the answer is, but a person of European descent, there are people uh, who are at more risk, uh, high risk populations compared to others. So this is just a small list, not a full list of the risk factors for type 2 diabetes is table one and it's in chapter four, screening for diabetes in adults. And as we see here, members of high risk population and we have listed our African, Arab, Hispanic, uh, Asian, indigenous, and uh, South Asian descent, and also low socioeconomic status. So these people are at more risk. And as you see, there's no European descent listed. So from here, we can conclude that this is not a risk factor. So we're going to cross that out. These are all risk factors except the European descent. Just another interesting point I'll just mention here as we were, as we were talking about uh, psychiatric conditions, bipolar disorder, or schizophrenia, for example. If a person's on an atypical antipsychotic, uh, an important point out that atypical antipsychotics can also be associated with diabetes. They can affect the blood sugar levels as well. All right, do have a look at this. Check it out. All right, that concludes the video. I hope you found this helpful. Give it a like or a thumbs up. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button for more videos like this. See you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Thank you.